Hello, my name is Ruth Carter and I'm a licensed attorney in Arizona. And this is your question of the day. All right, somebody asked me, can you give a sanity check for business owners? Okay, I think what this person is asking is, can I give like a checklist of things that every business owner should do to make sure that, that they've set themselves up properly? So I actually wrote notes in advance for this one. I have eight things that I recommend that you do um, or have in your sanity check as a business owner. Number one, do you have a business entity that's usually created with your uh, state uh, through the Secretary of State's office or maybe a corporation commission because you don't want to have a sole proprietorship because if the company gets sued, you want the company's assets to be at risk, not your personal assets. Number two, separate bank accounts and credit cards for the company. Uh, so that way the money is kept separate. Personal, company. Keep it separate in terms of money going out into the world. Number three, um, do you have all the necessary licenses and permits? And this is based on your industry, where you live, your city or county may require like a business license, others don't, so check with the rules where you live. Number four, if there is more than one owner in your company, do you have an operating agreement? This is the master document that lays out everyone's roles and responsibilities, how you're gonna deal with problems, uh, it's the master plan for company operations. So if you have more than one owner, especially if you're uh, in business with family or a good friend and you want to stay that way, make sure you have an operating agreement so that all these issues are ironed out well in advance. Uh, number five, do you have a written and signed contract for every client project? Every project, every time, signed contract, don't lift a finger until that contract is signed. Um, that's what I do with my clients. That's what I recommend all my clients do with theirs. So that way it is laid out in advance what exactly you're being hired to do, how you're getting compensated, when you're getting compensated, what your deliverables are, and how you're going to resolve problems if and when they come up. And those are just the basics of what I would put in the contract. But um, many times when someone comes to me and says, I'm having a problem with my client, they're not paying me or there's some other issue, the first thing I ask is, where's your contract? And a lot of times they say, we didn't have one. We just have a series of emails and some text messages. So uh, which then I have to piece together what this contract was based on communications and actions by the parties much easier when there's just one written contract that lays everything out from the beginning, helps avoid a lot of problems in the future. Uh, number six, have you documented what all your company's intellectual property is, just so that you are aware of what it is. Every company has IP, copyrights, trademarks. Um, you may have trade secrets, which are things that give you a competitive advantage by staying a secret. And in some cases you may have uh, patents or patentable inventions. So you want to just make sure you understand what your IP is so that you are aware of what IP you have to protect because that's part of owning IP is you also have to police your rights. Um, number seven, uh, piggybacking on IP, do you have a strategy for dealing with infringement or suspected infringement when it occurs? So that might include things like sending a cease and desist letter, um, a DMCA takedown notice in a copyright situation, sending a bill, calling, a, um, calling your lawyer, all these things. You want to decide in advance how you want to respond to these um, issues so that when they happen, you already have your master plan that says, when this happens, this is how we respond. And you've hopefully done everything in advance to just make that process happen seamlessly. And then number eight, and the last one on the list, do you meet with your accountant at least once a year? Um, unless you are a CPA by trade, it is too complicated for us to take care of the taxes that come with having a business. So yeah, you just let them do what they do. They will, you know, a good accountant will understand your situation, make sure you set up the right entity uh, based on your financial situation, tells you how your taxes 
um, are going to be handled, how much you're going to owe. I like to meet with mine twice a year, once in December, so he can review my books before the end of the year and let me know if I have to do like a spend down or if I have a big expenditure coming up, if I should do it the pre, you know, before the year ends or after the year next year starts. And he also gives me a heads up of what he expects my um, taxes to be um, the following year. So, and then of course you meet with your accountant during tax season. So I recommend that your accountant should be your partner in business. So that is my sanity check for entrepreneurs. Um, I'm sorry this video has been a little bit longer than usual, but I had eight things to cover. So, uh, of course, watching this video does not create an attorney-client relationship with any viewer. It's merely legal information, not legal advice. If you need legal advice, go hire somebody. I think that's all I have for now. If you have a question you want me to answer in an upcoming video, leave it as a comment below or shoot me an email. And until then, I will catch up with you later. Take care.